Hello and welcome to another Outlaws of Thunder Junction draft. I'm Paul Chion and we are now sitting at Diamond 3. We have had an absolutely incredible run uh, so far. We, we went, what, we have three trophies in a row. That's been amazing. Oh, I didn't even co collect my, uh, my gems yet for that last video. <laughs> Flex. Anyways, let's go ahead and hop into another pod here. And hopefully we can um, replicate this. What about Bristlebud Farmer in back-to-back-to-back -back 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 drafts? Would that be something else? Somebody run it through the calculator and just tell me the odds. Now, before this draft starts, if you wanted to support the content, I do have a Patreon channel. Shout out to all the current patrons. I really do appreciate your support. The Patreon is the best way to support the channel outside of, of course, watching these videos. The link to the Patreon is in the description below. Lots of extra bonuses and features, uh, which you can find out by checking out the link. All right, hopping into this draft and seeing what we can get here. Lots of great mythics and rares in this set, so why don't we open another one? <laughs> There's too many bombs in this set! Another green mythic! That's three green mythics in a row! Let's keep it going! I'm sure I'm not gonna take something else. We have a gold vein hydra here. Green X. Vigilance Trample Haste. Gold Vein Hydra enters the battlefield with X plus one plus one counters. When it dies, creates a create a number of tapped cre uh, treasure tokens equal to its power. I'm gonna take that one. What else is in the pack? Well, Endless Detour stinks. Canyon Crab is pretty good if you're playing kind of a Drago strategy. Uh, Explosive Derailment is a pretty solid removal spell. Cunning Coyote is a decent aggressively slanted card. So those are the cards I'd be looking at. If the Gold Vein Hydra wasn't in the pack, I'd probably take the Cunning Coyote as it's a 2-mana two 2-2 two two haste creature with plot that pumps something. And then there's also the Explosive Derailment that deals 4 damage. One of the issues that I found with red though is that the best removal spell in red is Explosive Derailment. And it doesn't kill a lot of the big green creatures. It doesn't kill Cactarantula and it doesn't kill uh, fr the Free Strider Commando. So I think that might be one of the reasons why red might be struggling just a little bit. But let's move on. I do feel like green so far, this is what, day three or four of the format, is the strongest color. I don't know if people have made the adjustments yet, but green is just so extremely deep. For example, Patient Naturalist is a premium green common. Three mana for a 2-3, enters a battlefield, mill three, get a land. You're going to get a land in like 90% of the time. And if you don't, you still get a treasure. So there's a fail case here. I think I'm going to take the Patient Naturalist here. Breaches is okay. Three mana, three, three menace creature. You don't get artifacts that often, it's not trivial, but if you can get it to work, it's good. But I don't want to take Breaches after first picking a Gold Vein Hydra. Plan to Heist is a decent um, decent way to get ahead on cards. Uh, Gold Rush is a pretty cool combat trick as well, but I think I just like the Naturalist more. It just makes my deck a little more flexible, and I'm just a really, really huge fan of the Naturalist in general. I do think Black Green is one of the better color combinations, so I really, really do like the Patient Naturalist here. All right, moving into this pack, we have Getaway Glamour. This is a really, really solid removal spell slash uh, way to... You can even remove two creatures from combat if your opponent has two things in play. So this there's a lot of flexibility here, which I like. Um, Rambling Possum is decent, but not insane. And the way I look at this card is, yeah, it's a 3-mana three 3-3, three, three, and it attacks as a 4-5, and that's solid. But I don't, I don't know. I don't know what it is. But I just feel like because green has so... Maybe it's because we're so blessed with having so many ridiculously strong green creatures that have lots of power and toughness that I just feel like this is a li little more replaceable. So I think I'm actually going to take the Hard Bristle Bandit here. I want to just keep cutting off the green. I do like the Possum, but I think the better two drops are hard to come by. And I think the Hard Bristle Bandit... Might just be the best green common in the set for that reason. Just because you have your your share of just amazing, you have your share of just amazing uh, large creatures you can play. Uh, that I think the ram creature is the most important thing that you can have for your deck. Here we have the choice. We can either move into black here for the vault plunderer. It's just a solid creature. I'm not going to take the giant beaver here, beaver here. These effects are replaceable. There's a prickly pear as well. That's a pretty solid creature. There's assimilation aegis, which is pretty nice. It's an equipment that exiles something. And then when I equip, um, it 
becomes a copy of the creature that I exiled. You know, this is one of those where I'm not necessarily taking the best card. I think I could take the Prickly Pear or even the Desert here. But I'm going to take the Assimilation Aegis and see if I can maybe splash it or play it in some way. Just because I think the card is super cool. And um, I'm taking this for science. I'm taking this for science. It is possible that we should have taken the Prickly Pear there. That was a pretty late Prickly Pear. And had we taken the Prickly Pear... Wow, how many times can I say Prickly Pear in a sentence? Um, I could have taken this Explosive Derailment. But I want to keep myself still open here. And I'm just going to take the Spinewoods Paladin because this is just another solid green creature. And I just want to cut, cut off green as much as I can, to be honest. So let's take the Paladin here. I do like the, the Derailment. If we, keep seeing red, if we keep seeing red cards, I will move into it. And this might be what it takes for me to move into uh, red here. I should have taken the Prickly Pear. But, it, but I wanted to try the shiny new thing. Savage Smash is incredible. I do think this is... Uh, worthy of taking over something like a gold rush. So I'm going to take it here and uh, see if we can move into Gruul. And maybe we just don't take the Assimilation Aegis. All right, here we have, wow, okay, the green cards are flowing. Um, we have Gold Rush as a combat trick, Patient Naturalist, and Getaway Glamour. I don't think I'm going to take the Glamour, even though I think it's good. Green tends to have a lot of big creatures too, so this is solid but not insane. I'm just going to take the Naturalist. I just love this card. It's possible that I should take the Gold Rush, but I don't know. I mean, we, 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 we're we still kind of, we're still trying to keep our options a little bit open here and figure out what our second color needs to be. So let's go ahead and do that. And now I think I'm just going to take the Mystical Tether over the Paladin. Make your own luck is okay, but I do like hard removal. And like, th th given that we took the Naturalist, I think we're still trying to keep ourselves flexible here. So when you see a, a premium removal spell like the Mystical Tether that late, I think um, that certainly is something that you need to consider. Let's put the Gold Vein Hydra here. And here I'm going to take the Conduit Pylons. This does look like a deck that might be kind of a green based deck, splashing a bunch of other colors. So for in decks like that, I do not mind the Conduit Pylons. Now we have this pack. Is two Conduit Pylons too many? I'm going to take it and find out. I'm going to take it and find out. Here I'll take a Goblin Lackey in case we somehow end up in a red-green, like, really aggressive deck. And Oh, very, very happy picking up the Creosote Heath here to allow us to splash the Mystical Tether and give us a Desert. This gives us three Deserts for our deck now. Don't really want to play the Supplier if I can help it. And so, yeah, we are just mostly green and just try to figure out the rest. Well, hey, look. We got another rare. I got to take it. Tarnation Vista is a pretty cool mana fixer, right? It, it comes into play uh, and gives you a mana of any color, which is really nice. Every now and then it can generate you additional mana. But Contagion Engine is awesome, especially if you can ramp into it. So I'm going to take it here. Uh, we'll note that black seems extremely cut off. So usually I like pairing green with black, but uh, that doesn't seem to be the case here. I think it's going to be some combination of green... Splashing a bunch of colors, but let's take the Contagion Engine. This card was an absolute slam dunk bomb in, um, uh, I believe, Scars of Mirrodin block. Uh, so you play this, it shrinks all their things, and then when you pay four mana, you effectively wrath their board. Uh, I'm going to also keep an eye out for other ways I can put plus one, plus one counters on my creatures, because the proliferate does matter in that sense. But let's slam Contagion Engine and see where things go. All right, moving on, we have Primal Might. This is an excellent, excellent removal spell. X green, target creature you control gets plus X, plus X until end of turn, and it fights something. So it's just a nice way to deal a ton of damage to your opponent while also killing a creature. So I do like that. Desertion is also a really, really cool counter spell. It's a five mana, you counter target spell. If you counter a creature, basically, you can put that into play under your control. But it costs five mana. So it's kind of easier to play around. If your opponent sniffs out a counter, they can kind of plot something. So I'd rather just take the green bomb here in the Primal Might. Spinewood's Armadillo is also a very, very nice creature, but I do not think it's better than the Primal Might here. So let's go ahead and take Primal Might and move on. Trying to figure out, again, we're still like kind of, we're not sure what our second color is going to be, but we're just kind of green X right now. 
Moving on to this pack, we have a Free Strider Commando and Snakeskin Veil. I could take the Abraded Bluffs if I'm interested in playing both the Savage Smash and the Mystical Tether. That could be interesting. I will say right now, Akram and Satoru are obviously great, but those are just not the colors that I'm in. I will say right now, I've been finding that my decks just have way more than enough playable. So yeah, let's take the Braided Bluffs. I feel like I'm... I, I won't be opposed to playing either of these cards, so having this as a way to splash both of them seems pretty nice. Moving on here, we have the best card being Consuming Ashes, but of course, uh, we can't really play it in our... We have zero black cards, so we can't really play it. Lush Oasis isn't great, just because we don't have any... Uh, we only have the Assimilation, assimilation Aegis as the blue card, so what do we take? What do we take? Thunder Salvo is okay, but I'm not doing a whole lot of plottings. I'm not playing multiple spells in a turn. I could use a two drop. So why don't we just take Omen Port Vigilante? We do actually have a surprising amount of interaction here. So I do think the Vigilante, we, we will be able to commit crimes here with the Vigilante. And if we can, this card's just, you know, a solid beater. Moving on here, we have Riku of Many Paths. If I'm, let's say, a green-red base deck splashing can i splash the blue here and make this work it needs modal cards and i currently have zero modal cards so don't think i want to take that right i have zero modal cards yeah so probably at this point we just need to start taking cards for our deck so i'm just going to take free strider commando as just a solid beatdown creature for this deck and move on not seeing a ton of white not seeing a ton of white so maybe this vigilante is also not where we want to be definitely seeing blue here but we didn't see a lot of blue in pack one so I don't really want to take something like this Nimble Brigand. I suppose I can take Take Up the Shield if I do end up in a um, green-white deck. It's just a solid combat trick. I think I like it. I, I think Drover Grizzly is just highly, highly replaceable. So I'll take the uh, Take Up the Shield as just another good combat trick. And we'll take another Mystical Tether out of this pack. So getting our fair share of removal here. Double Mystical Tether to go with a Primal Might is very, very nice. Oh, and a Buried in the Garden. Okay. All right, so now we don't need to prioritize removal as much. We're going to lock ourselves into some kind of a green-white deck with uh, the potential to splash Assimilation Aegis or the Savage Smash. You know what's weird? And I think this is just a byproduct of the fact that green is so heavily drafted, just because now I think people are getting to the point where they know that green is very good. Uh, we, somehow we passed almost no green in pack one, but we're not seeing any green in pack two. A little suspicious. I think we'll get rewarded in pack three, though. I think we'll get rewarded in pack three. You know what? It's the thing where it's really hard. It's really hard where if you... There's so many good green bombs in this set where if you first pick a green rare, I understand. It's hard to kind of get off that first pick early in the draft. So I totally understand. Now, is Savage Smash worth splashing? I don't know. I don't know. Endless Detour is certainly not worth splashing. Um, I'll take a Quilled Charger here. I don't think I'm going to need to splash that, but I'll take it here just in case. If I'm aggressive enough and I need a combat trick, I can take Reach for the Sky. But I feel like I'm not that aggressive, and I have enough removal where I don't, where I just don't want a card like that. Oh, okay! Wow, look at this pack! We're slamming Silvala. 4 mana, 4, 5 Vigilance. When you cast a creature spell, make a 1, 1 to Mercenary token with the pump effect. Tap. Choose a color. Add 1, uh, one mana of that color among... Uh, while wow, reading. Add 1 mana of that color for each different power among creatures you control. So it's a 4 mana, 4, 5 Vigilance that makes tokens and also ramps you. Yes, please. But Stingerback Terror is also incredible. 4 mana for a 7-7 seven, seven Flying Trampling Dragon. It plots, and it gets minus one, minus one for each card in your hand. If we were red-green, we would absolutely slam this. There's also Mystical Tether, a Repulse, Outlaw Stitcher. I mean, this card is amazing. One, two, three, four. Four cards that's worthy of first picking. Five cards, of course, because we are first. We are slamming this Selvala. So very, very happy about the Selvala here. And let's move on. Moving on to this pack. Another green rare. Why don't we take that? For more Vaults, doesn't do anything. So I'm not going to take that. Free Strider Lookout is a 3-mana, three 3-3 three, three reach creature. Whenever you commit a crime, we have some deserts and a bunch of removal spells, so we're going to commit crimes often. You may put a land, uh, look at the top five cards of your library, can put a land card from them into the battlefield tapped. 
Seems awesome. Back for more is very good, but I don't have black facing. But this is a very, very good spell. Jolene is also quite nice. Like, if we were red-green, I mean, Cactus Folk Sure Shot and Jolene would also be fantastic. But we are going to slam this Free Strider Lookout. All right. Really, really loving where this is going so far. Looking for green and white cards, uh, potentially red or blue cards on the splash. I do have a couple of Conduit Pylons and a Hard Bristle Bandit and Buried in the Garden, so I can kind of splash anything if I really want to. Moving into this pack, I have the choice between Honest Rudstein on a splash, which is okay. But you know what? I think I'm just going to take the Giant Beaver. Green-White is kind of the mount color combination, and I could use a little bit of beef here. So I'll just take the Giant Beaver just as a, a curve filler for this deck. I don't think I want I don't think I want to take the Sterling Key Keeper, but we'll note that I am in the look on the lookout for some cheap cards. So if I can get access to some cheap creatures here moving forward, I can certainly take them. Moving on to this pack, we have what does this do? No, Kellen joins up is not good. I have the choice between a giant beaver or a bristling backwoods. If I take the Bristling Backwoods, it's another way to commit crime, which is quite good with the Vigilante and the Bandit. Um, what else is it good with? It's also It also allows me to splash the Savage Smash. I mean, this pack is pretty bad, right? Like, there's just a Giant Beaver. So I'm just gonna... I'll take the Backwoods. And let's, let's put Savage Smash in here. I think this card is pretty nice. Moving on to this pack, we have... Another desert, but I think, uh, like I said before, I, I really need two drops. So I'm going to take the Bristleback Sentry just to kind of shore up the early game for my deck. And move on. Do we take another Bristlepack Sentry? I think so. I think so. We have enough big creatures here where I do think it's going to eventually be able to attack. I don't think Form a Posse is good enough to splash. I think it's more important right now for me to make sure I have enough two drops. So now I have four two drops, so I'm feeling much, much better about my curve. And here I'll take Trained Erinx. I love the Trained Erinx. Just a nice little solid aggressive creature. So now we have five twos, so I'm much, much happier about the mana curve of my deck. Now we have the choice between Form a Posse or Free Strider Commando. With double Bristle Pack Sentry, I think I'm just going to take the Commando. I think I'm probably higher on this than most people. And, um... I don't really know how good this form of posse is going to be either. And I could use another three here, I think. All right, mystical tether on the table here. Wow. Tons and tons of removal here for us. Eight removal spells. Sign me up. Cactus Folk Sure Shot. Now, is that something that I want to splash? I mean, we have... We certainly have the mana fixing for it, so... I'll, I'll consider it. Take a fibble thip here just uh, to... Uh, just so we can start collecting more gems. My, my goal is to get to uh, 100k gems. It requires a, lots and lots of winning though. Now, what is my mana fixing like? I, I'm looking at, for example, the Simulation age, uh, Aegis to see if that's worth playing. Again, going to take a rare. I'm, I have enough removal where I don't need the Tornado. And I don't think Luxurious Locomotive is especially good. I don't think the Armadillo is good either. Wow, we just got so much removal. Now, this deck is not really great at generating card advantage, though, I will say. So, we'll see kind of how this plays out. And this is what we have. Let's put Goldvein Hydra at the 5 mana slot. I think that's kind of where you're really starting to get a lot of value there. We have 5 twos. Lots and lots of removal. We have to make the decision as to whether or not we want to play uh, like some of these red cards here. Yeah, I don't think the shirt... I mean, the shirt shot's good. I just don't think it's worth splashing. I just feel like I don't need to... Uh, stretch my mana just to play, like, a random four mana big creature. Like, it's a good creature. But... Um, I kind of want to minimize the number of red sources I play. Alright, so I think, yeah. Let's cut the Cactus Folk shirt shot. And... Honestly, because... Like, if I was lacking removal... I would play this card, but I have triple, triple Mystical Tether, Buried in the Garden, and Primal Might, and I believe I'm going to splash this Savage Smash as well. And Savage Smash is easier to splash with the double red deserts. So let's cut the 
um, assimilation aegis and go with something like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight spells, 15 creatures. Seems fairly neat here. Now I gotta just figure out my mana sources here. Let's take a look. Lots of green cards. I don't I think I can probably cut one of these conduit pylons. I don't I don't think. I mean, maybe I can cut both. Like, I don't really care about deserts, right? I just have zero cards that care about deserts. So I think I can just probably cut both of them. Yeah, I just kind of don't want this card. Yeah, so this gives us nine green, nine white. I guess nine white is unnecessary. Something like this. And then we play like one mountain and that gives us three red sources plus the hard bristle bandit. That's four and the buried in the garden. All right. I, I guess we can 13, 14. Yeah. No, this is perfect. Yeah, I don't need the conduit thing. All right. I'm not super excited about this deck, but uh, we'll see how this goes. I feel like our trophy streak will be broken in this draft. I'm also a little bit concerned that I might have a little too much mana. 17 lands plus the Bristleback and two patient naturalists uh, and a buried in the garden might be a little bit much. So it's possible that I want to play another mana source. This also gets us lands. Although this hand could use a land. This hand can definitely use a land. All right, we drew a land though. So now things are looking pretty good here. Turn to a Bristleback Sentry into... Turn 3 Patient Naturalist, probably. We don't have a way to commit a crime. And this, this ensures that we can play a turn 4 Silvala. Ooh. Hard Bristle Bandit's also interesting. But I feel like I just play Patient Naturalist and it's going to be hard to miss. And let's go ahead and... Ooh, that, this is interesting. I milled the Contagion Engine, which is sad. Um, I really want to play Silvala next turn, so I feel like I just get the Mountain. It also allows us to play our Splash card. The only thing is, Deserts are all, all, are all very interesting because I have this Free Strider Lookout. But I think this is probably better. Nimble Brigand. Oh, we drew the land, though. Alright, anyways. Let's play Silvala. And let's attack for three. This thing is going to make me so much mana next turn if they don't kill it. They are blue-black though, so lot, plenty of ways to kill Silvala. Lively Dirge? As an Entomb? Wow. Okay. Reanimate? Oh, that is awesome. That is awesome. I am so happy that my opponent actually did that. That is incredible. That's so sweet. <laughs> I don't think it was good, but I think it's super sweet that they were able to do that. Um, let's attack with these. Alright, so do I just want to make like Anytime I cast the thing, I make a 1-1. One, one. So I have a 3 power, a 2 power, and a 4 power. If I play this, that's going to be a 5 power and a 1 power. So I, it'll give me 5 mana? Okay. I'm just going to assume I read this correctly. Go green mana. Oh, five mana. Holy cow. Wow. <laughs> and they're at five? Yeah, I mean, reanimate does come with a cost. I hope this is good enough. I mean, this has got to be good enough, right? Look at our board. Oh, man, Silvala. We untapped... And we made three 1-1s one -ones and played a 5-4, a 3-3, three -three, and a 3-3. Three -three. What the heck? Oh, the rares are juiced. Oh, the rares are most certainly juiced. What is our opponent going to do? Yeah, we have a bunch of these mercenaries that can help pump a bunch of creatures to get in for a bunch of damage. They can attack with Roxanne, but I feel like they want the blocker. 
They can attack with Nimble Brigan, but again, I feel like they want the blocker. Yeah. <laughs> but but props to our opponent. Reanimating reanimating that thing, like drafting a reanimator deck in non-cube limited. Big props. Big props. Savala also gives you mana. Yeah, like what am I supposed to do? Just play like a just play what what should I do? Should I just play stagecoach security? Do I have enough to do with my mana? I don't know. I'm on the play, and this hand is pretty rough. I just have the Omen Port Vigilante and a take up the shield. I need to draw like two more lands for this hand to be good. I do have Sovala, but I don't. If I had like a Plains and a Forest, maybe, I'm going to mulligan that hand. Oh, this hand is significantly better. We will keep this. And I will bottom. I'm just going to bottom the Vigilante. I, I want to play my Desert turn one. And I think the Sentry just overall will be giving me a little more value. I have two four power creatures in my hand. I think bottoming a land is just obscenely greedy. And we drew a bunch of lands, so we're okay. They discarded? I bet they have a counter, but... I was trying to play around a counter, so I played the beaver first. I don't know if that's correct. I mean, surely they will have a way to kill this beaver now, right? Nope, just a free strider commando. Alright, so now we'll go ahead and play Silvala. We'll saddle it. Okay. I mean, I could have I could have put a counter on the bristle pack, I guess, but saddle three. Oh, that's a good one. Other outlaws you control have haste, but the thing is, they can't really block, so it's just like it's still not insane here. Uh, how do I want to do this? I can play Patient Naturalist, which I'm going to do. And then I can just use the Tether on the boss. Oh, and I can still saddle this. All right. All right. <laughs> Silvala 2. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Silvala 2, uh, opponents 0. I guess, I mean, I do have Contagion Engine um, and uh, Gold Vein Hydra and Primal Might as like Mana Sync, so maybe this is still good enough. We'll see. I, I, I don't want to rock the boat. I, I just, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep it with these mana sources. It might be a little bit heavy. Okay. Bristle Pack Sentry with a couple of removal spells and a Free Strider Commando. Hand seems certainly fine here. All right, let's keep this. Turn two Sentry. Yeah. I'm, the, the only question is like whether or not I play this Commando on turn three or try to wait till I plot. If I don't have anything else to do, I don't know. It's kind of close, because I want to be able to attack with the Bristle Pack Sentry as well. Hopefully I just draw, like, a Patient Naturalist or something to play. Contagion Engine. Nice. Ooh, do they have a Holy Cow? Well, I'm going to play the Bandit. Would have liked that a turn earlier. They do have a holy cow. Ooh, 
check this out. I can plot. I can plot and then I can uh, proliferate. Yeah. Just gonna pass every turn, huh? I mean, nothing really worth killing. And I don't really want to attack with this and have it die to some flash creature. Uh, yeah, let's just plot this. Could be another holy cow. Oh, uh, four mana, draw two cards. I'm okay with my opponent doing that. Kind of afraid to run this out into open mana. <clears throat> okay. Well, um... Huh. Well, let's play this. The question is, do I go... Do I kill the Marauding Sphinx, or do I just play Contagion Engine? I think I just play Contagion Engine, right? Like, sure, I can kill the Sphinx and attack, but this is the opportunity to resolve the Contagion Engine, and then I take three, and then I get to basically kill this, shrink this down, and pump this bun a bunch. All right, let's do it. Put a minus one. Oh, that also, uh, that also untaps, which is nice. All right. Come on. Come on, Contagion Engine. <laughs> Come on, Contagion Engine. No! Wait! Wait! I have Buried in the Garden. I can use Buried in the Garden on Detention Sphere. Yes. This is okay. Everything is fine. Everything is fine. All right, let's tap this for a white, green, boom, boom. <laughs> yes, I love it. I love it. We'll target your detention sphere. Contagion engine comes back. Put a minus one minus counter on each creature target player controls. Don't mind if I do. Oh, it only happens once each turn. Sure. Is this at instant speed? Okay. Let's attack. <laughs> this is so sweet. I don't even know how good it is. But, uh... I just wanted to do it. I want my engine in play, all right? And we will pass. We can end of turn proliferate and just... It's like four mana put two counters on Free Strider Commando. Don't mind if I do. The Rock agrees, you see? Oh, okay. Dang, Free Strider Commando down. That's rough. All right. No counters, sadness. Any way to put counters on things? Nope. All right, we have a trained Erynx. Do I want to kill this doggy? I don't hate it. Let's see, green, red. And let's attack. This uh, prairie dog is very, very good. And I do have mystical tether for another creature that they might play. So this isn't too bad. Gem Lightfoot. That is certainly a creature that I want to kill. Ooh, that was a really great draw. 
All right, so let's go ahead and play the beaver. Ah, hold on. Oops, I don't want to do that. Saddle the beaver. Scry. Don't want that. Ooh, and the beaver puts counters on things, and then with the contagion engine still does stuff. All right. I mean, that was their best play last turn, so I can't imagine they're going to have a creature that's better than the gem lightfoot here, but we'll see. But a lot of pressure coming in right now. They're at 8 life. We have 11 power on the battlefield. Let's see what they have. Okay. Oh, ho, 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 ho. One, two, three, four, five. I'm going to do this for five um, so that I can play around the counter spell for two mana. Was that a good draw? <laughs> All right. All right. Mythics for the win. Bomb, bomb, bomb. Let's keep it going. All right, round four. Yep, this is a keeper. We have two deserts, three lands. A, yeah, I mean... Train Dyrinx turn two, Free Strider, Commando, and Savala. So can't complain about this. Although Double Desert's a little bit awkward here because I do want to play this Patient Naturalist on turn three, but I really... Okay, never mind. I drew an untapped land. Ignore everything that I say. Ignore everything that I said. Playing Blue Black. Ooh, Sultai with Treasure Dredger. Ooh, Satoru. That's exciting. All right, let's play this Patient Naturalist. Hopefully we can find an untapped land. All right, nice. Let's saddle this up. Like, I don't mind trading the trained Erinx for this Atoru. And then I get a Scry here as well. At this point, we don't need any more lands. Actually, I don't really want the Vigilante either. All right, they make a treasure. And uh, uh, kind of the hope right now is like we kind of punish them for... Paying life to make treasures. That's kind of the, the hope. They're going to be able to draw a card here with the Satoru. Uh, let's see. They could have a counter. I don't care. Like if they have a counter, they have a counter. This is just so much better to play earlier. And, like, I just want to put mass maximum pressure. Could use more removal spells and such. All right. I'm sure Savala's going to die here. <laughs> Some way, somehow. All right, shoot the sheriff. They have access to five mana. Interesting. Huh, what do I want to do? I don't think I want to play the Hydra just yet. I'm going to play the Beaver this turn. I don't think I need the land. I, like I said, I'm just looking for interaction. We have enough lands here already. Let's smack them for one with the abraded bluffs. What do they have? I mean, they, I assume they're trying to play a big creature. 
Oh, okay. Yeah, no, that card's very good. For each opponent who didn't discard a card with mana value 4 or greater, draw a card. Alright. Oh, and they're going to copy it too? Sure. They will be able to draw a card off that one. Oh yeah, that was an incredible turn for them. Uh, all right. This has a saddle three cost. So this will trade with like a hollow marauder. Alternatively, I can just attack with everything. This goes here. This goes here, this goes here. Maybe I just do that. Yeah, let's just attack with everything. Maximum pressure, as they say. How are they going to block the Goldvein Hydra? Okay, sure. So now I, I now have all the treasures on the planet, but they have a lot more cards in hand and they're at three life. So definitely a close one. Our opponent had a really, really awesome turn there. So props to them for that. Vault Plunt, are, oof. okay, down to two. Down to two. Razzle Dazzler, okay. So lots of defense. Ooh. <laughs> Was that a good draw? <laughs> oh my gosh. GG. Yes, I'd like to proliferate. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Oh my goodness, that was unreal. Contagion Engine! It's a good magic card. It is a good magic card, especially because this format's not super duper fast. So it's just it's just another one-sided wrath. That's colorless. Alright. <laughs> Alright, taking a look at this hand on the draw. I have lots of green sources. I have a mystical tether. Naturalist gets me. I'm going to keep. I believe. Like, even if I don't draw specifically a green source, I do have the tether here. Contagion Engine is obviously great. A, a forest would just be so absurd, though. All right, Frontier Seeker, okay. Well, I'm gonna have to just fire this off. Like I said, this deck has nine green sources. So that was three draw steps. This will now be draw step number four. Okay, well, I'll... I mean, it's something, right? Like, I'm still somewhat doing okay. But na now, I mean, if we don't... Okay, here we go. There we go. There we go. Do I have a way to commit a crime? Hmm. Oh, this thing has vigilance? I think I just want to do this. Because if this dies, then I can play Contagion Engine. I just hope they don't have exile removal for this. Oh my gosh, am I dead? <laughs> am I dead?
Oh, look at all the value they're getting. That's incredible. They missed twice? All right, let's um, block Prairie Dog, I guess. I'm at five life? Holy cow. Well? I mean, if they don't have any creature, we're okay. I can just cast Contagion Engine and hope. What, what, what's my other option here? Yeah? Yeah, literally any creature and we die. Or a pump spell. Alright. Calamity is completely busted, by the way. Cal Calamity is very strong. Alright, you know what? Maybe I should have mulliganed that hand. Alright, I'm just gonna throw that out there. Maybe I should have mulliganed that hand. Alright, we got a loss here. Punished for our greed. Alrighty. Ooh. Not bad. Three lands, Hard Bristle, Bandit, Sterling Supplier, Mystical Tether, and Buried in the Garden. Could use another, just a large creature to play to follow the Hard Bristle Bandit. That would be nice. <sighs> yeah. A little unfortunate to not be able to do anything on turn three off the Bandit just because we have all removal spells, but... It looks like our opponent's going to discard. So they didn't have a removal spell for this. I'm going to play Sterling Supplier. And uh, free win, I guess. Our opponent also punished for their greed. Actually, they I don't know. I have no idea what they had. They could have had a handful of three drops and it, they just got unlucky. But... That is the nature of magic. You will lose 5 to 10% of your games from um, mana inconsistencies, if not more. All right, 5 and 1. Going for trophy number 4. Can our deck pull it off? Bunch of white cards here with... Man. I have mostly green cards. We have a green play on turn three. Our white cards are premium. So I'm going to keep this once again. We have a hard bristle bandit, eight white sources, patient naturalist. All right, we got there. Happy that we got there. All right, so they're not going to play something this turn either. Um... I guess might as well play this because I want to scry. All right, we got a desert. Does committing a crime matter? I mean, I just want to play a tap land here, right? Let's attack. Scry, don't need lands. We can bottom that. So the sentry not being great here. We need a big thing in play. They have a, a the giantest of beavers. Hmm. I want I want to get value off of this so badly, but I think it's better to just cast buried in the garden here. I think the mana acceleration is going to be pretty important. And I can still go... Now I can go Free Stride. Wow, I'll keep that. I'll go Free Strider uh, Lookout into Mystical Tether. But actually, if they just put a creature, are they dead next turn? One, two, three, four, five. We can Primal Might for five. Oh, never mind. They have Hellspur Posse Boss. And they kept up Snakeskin Veil. 
They kept up Snakeskin Veil. All right, well, let's play the Lookout. So I'm going to just play Mystical Tether here. And oh, you know what? I actually messed that. Well, whatever. Ooh. Oh, it only happens once each turn. That's unfortunate. <laughs> uh... Bottom that. Man, this deck... I didn't realize we had so many rares. Rare, Mythic, Rare. Silvala. We have good removal. They got five cards in hand, though. But we have access to seven mana. We can Primal Might for six. Trained Erings is such a house, too. Interesting. So they have access to two mana. This thing has, uh, what is it? Reach Ward 2. It's just weird because like, I feel like I can save this Primal Might for... I feel like I can save this Primal Might, but I can also just go for it here. But I just don't like it when they have mana up. So let's just go with the tether. We'll keep the beaver. I could have gone for like a primal might for one. And perhaps this is me playing a little bit scared. But... It seems hard to lose from this spot unless they have a sweeper. All right, they hit a mountain into... I mean, you got to play another thing here or you're dead, right? I, I mean, I imagine they're just dead, so... Yeah. All right. Bruce Tarl. That's a nice one, too. Okay. That one was super smooth. It's just ABC magic, right? I play some creatures, I have some key removal spells, and you win the game. Okay, six and one. Can we make it trophy number four? Trophy number four. Big green monsters, sweet rares. Go, go, go. Alrighty. What do we have? Yeah, perfectly fine hand. Two forests, two uh, planes, hard bristle bandit into vigilante sterling supplier with a removal spell. Island from the opponent. We drew the Bristle Pack Sentry. Gonna lead with the Bandit here because then turn three I can double spell. I can go Vigilante into Bristle Pack Sentry. And then turn four I can play Sterling Supplier. Turn the Sentry into a 4-4 four -four and have it attack, which is really nice. They probably have like a holy cow or something. I don't know. I just feel like anything named Vigilante should have Vigilance. Who's with me? Who's with me? All creatures with Vigilante should have Vigilance. It's just in my brain. Like the Hazda Vigilante and uh, MKM. Who's with me? Somebody's with me. Alright, I definitely want to kill that. I'm just trying to figure out what I want to play. Hmm. Oh, wait, I have access to... It, it doesn't matter. I mean, I guess I get in for one extra point of damage. The thing is, I kind of want to just play the supplier and pump this next turn, right? In attack, that seems pretty good. So I guess we play the sentry. I, I'm not I'm not even entirely sure. Like, I don't even know if it's better to put it on the sentry. Like, I can put it on the vigilante, and that makes that um really tough to deal with. And now, like, my opponent has five mana available. I just don't want to attack. Right? Yeah. No, now I wish I played the vigilante. Oh well. All 
I don't want to play the Sterling Supplier into five open mana. I just feel like that's not something that I'm interested in. So yeah, I missed out on two points of damage. I just feel like they had Phantom Interference here. Like, just try your best to play around Phantom Inter Interference is, uh, is my take. They're going to make a 2-2. Two 2-2 -two. Two -two Flyer, go. Oh, bounce two creatures. Oh, sure. Bounce is permanence. I didn't know that. All right, uh, let's go white. This one's going to be a tough matchup, I feel. It looks like they have an extremely tricky deck. Uh, I'm going to hold off on this. They could have another bounce spell. And I didn't play the Heath here because next turn I can get the trigger off the bandit, but this only happens once each turn anyways. At some point I'll draw a big creature. All right, Metamorphic Blast, draw two, okay. Next turn, we can run out the Sterling Supplier. We're kind of, yeah, we're kind of out of gas and they're up a lot of cards. So I am definitely not feeling good about this, especially because they're at such a high life total. Gold Vein Hydra is interesting, but I think I want to kick things off here. I want to kick things off here with the Sterling Supplier, I think. They kept up triple blue, which is a really... They could have Archmage's Charm or something like that. All right. Oh, oh no, I committed a crime. I'm so bad. Oh, I'm so bad. I just didn't see. I should have attacked with the Vigilante. Oh. Oh, that was such a mistake. Oh my gosh. I literally committed a crime. That Oh, that was such a mistake. Un unbelievable. Unbelievable. Man. Yeah, I feel like... I don't know if I'm going to win this game. I think I'm a pretty big dog, especially if they have an answer to this Hydra. But I feel like I could have done a couple of small things differently in terms of how I sequence my spells. And they did have Archmage's Charm. We did call it. I'm surprised they let the Supplier resolve. Oh my gosh. That's so brutal. Like, they should be at like... Eight or something like that here. Maybe seven. Maybe six. I don't know. They should be at a much lower life total here. All right. At this point, I don't think I'm in a position to, like, play around anything. They have an excellent kind of draw-go deck. 
And it matches up pretty well with what we're trying to do. So I'm going to just attack with the Vigilante and use take up the shield. But yeah, I mean, if I lose this, it's certainly my fault. This, this is... Once again, I'm just like not tapping my bandit. Oh, well. <laughs> oh my gosh, how many things do you have? Path to exile? All right. Oh, I boarded out a mountain. Holy cow. All right. I mean, we have some bombs still in our deck, but um, yeah, their deck is incredible. All right, they played everything. Yeah, they have a really, really nice deck. This is like the dream blue-white deck. Right? Journey to Nowhere, Immersion Haunting, Tethers, Path to Exile, Bunch of Bounce Spells, Repulse, Gem Lightfoot. It's got, got it all. All right, I'm done. Uh, okay, I'll draw one more card. I shouldn't have double blocked. I'm, I'm playing so bad this game. Why, why did they double pump? They could have double pumped and killed both my things, right? <laughs> I'm just playing like 2 out of 10 here oh that's a point of damage <sighs> alright I guess they value scrying they value surveilling one more than killing two of my creatures I would have killed two of the creatures Like, what can I draw? Contagion Engine is always an out, right? I need to draw my third Mythic to have a chance here. Savage Smash to kill this would be nice. All right. I'll give it one more turn. Okay? I'll give it one more turn. I'll give myself one turn to draw Contagion Engine. Oh, the Archmage's Charm was brutal. See, when I thought of the blue-white flash deck, the, my opponent's deck is kind of where I was hoping I'd be. The problem is, like, it requires a ton of, like, uncommons and stuff to have it really be good. But I do think they have an excellent, excellent version of this deck. All right, Contagion Engine. Probably won't be good enough. Uh, I play this. They hit me for six. All right. Yep, yep, yep. Would I? Could I have won this game? Unclear. Don't think so. But we definitely did not um, help our cause. But look, there are ups and downs. Ups and downs. Sometimes you play well. Sometimes you play poorly. As long as you try to learn from the mistakes you make along the way. I'll keep this. We got the Contagion Engine, three lands, Mystical Tether, a couple of Commandos. No two drops, but I think it's fine. Our opponent Mulligan, which is helps our cause. I don't even know if I'm on the play or draw. Wait, I made the Mulligan decision for... Wait, no. No, they're on the play. Okay. Spinewoods Paladin, I guess that's that technically counts as a four. Ooh. If they get an aggressive green-white mount start, that could be problematic. 
Wow. Okay. Let's hope they don't play the 4-2. If they play the 4-2, we're just dead. Like, straight up dead. Turn 3-4-2. Or Wiley Duke or whatever. Oh my gosh. That was scary. I mean, we're tethering that immediately. Oh, they have a snakeskin veil? I mean, what am I going to do? Play around snakeskin veil? Could use a land here, though. Deck. Deck. Oh, they don't have anything to do with their mana. Okay. That's very good for us. If I don't draw a land, I'm certainly just playing out this commando. They did it? What? I'm going to play the bandit. Oh. Leyline binding on mystical tether. Nice. I mean, Dick, yeah. All right, we might lose the game right here on the spot. If they can play another creature to saddle the seraphic steed. Does this thing fly? No, it's a first strike life linker. Clear shot. Okay. Oh yeah, we're we're dead. All right, you know what? What that was an incredible like steed with the beaver and the leyline binding. I mean, this is just over. All right, we're dead. All right, you know what? It's okay. They're going to just make keep making flyers. It, it is what it is. Seraphic steed is also a bomb. Look, this is just a format and you're going to have to get used to it here. You're going to have to get used to it. Okay? So don't don't go on too crazy of a tilt. Everything balances out. You're going to have your bombs. Your opponents are going to have their bombs. It's really, really important. That's why in this format, two, draft removal and prioritize them very highly because there are so many creatures in this format that will win the game by themselves. So this is a big mind shift that I think you're going to have to make from Murders at Karlov Manor draft. You need to make this mind shift in this format to succeed. And I think that's why a lot of people are having tr trouble in this format. You know what? I bet you old school magic players, because like me or boomers, they prioritize removal higher than creatures in a lot of instances. And this is a format where that actually works because of just the sheer volume of bombs that exist in this set. So just make sure you, you, make, that, you make that adjustment. For example, the best black common in the set is Consuming Ashes. I think that's the name of the card. And I thought that was the... I, and I said that that was going to be the best black common in the set, not knowing the speed of the format or anything like that in general, but just because that's a card that I just like, right? But if that card was in Murders at Karlov Manor, it'd be a joke, right? Four mana kill anything against in, in, in a format full of disguise cards. But remember, we are free from the disguise creatures, right? And the format's slower. So hard, unconditional removal is really, really important. And that's why I prioritize it so highly. And our deck was really good at that. We just didn't draw that. We did draw one, but they killed it. Um, but we have we had triple mystical tether, buried in the garden with primal might and savage smash and contagion engine. We had a ton of removal, which is why our deck ended up doing pretty well. Uh, we lost a couple. Uh, we lost a couple games just because of some. Uh, we lost one game because of a greedy keep. This game we lost to the steed, and then in the last game, bad sequencing and in a really great blue white deck were the causes of our loss. But this deck was pretty solid. We had gold vein hydra. This thing is incredible. Silvala, this thing is ridiculous. If you ever if you ever untap and they don't kill this, you're basically going to play like three creatures, make three creatures, and you're just going to win the game. This thing is completely bonkers. Just make sure you have a lot of creatures to make this pay off. And then, of course, Primal Might. And then Contagion Engine. Oh, my gosh. Contagion Engine was amazing. We even had a couple of ways to have counters, too. We had a couple of Free Strider Commandos. Uh, the Sterling Supplier, Goldvein, uh, Hydra, and also the Giant Beaver. So we actually had ways to even pump our creatures if we wanted. But ultimately, I mean, you can never really complain about going 6-3. and three. Green, I firmly believe, is the best color in the set. It's extremely deep. Um, there's just very few green commons that are bad. What are the bad green commons? I think the, bad, like, the plus 3, plus 2 reach aura is not great. 
But if you're an aggressive deck, it's still fine. Uh, but every, like, Giant Beaver, it's fine. It's still a 4-mana four 4-4 four, four Vigilance card. You never take this highly. And that's how the formats, that's how Limited's evolved. A 4-mana four 4-4 four, four, no text used to be awesome. Now it's a 4-mana four 4-4 four, four Vigilance with Upside. And it's still fine. It's like a card you take and it's fine. But I think it's still very solid. But you have Giant Beaver, Free Strider Commando, Spinewoods Paladin, Cactarantula. All of these cards are just really solid on rate, right? Not to mention you have Patient Naturalist at three, a premium three, Hard Bristle Bandit, a premium two. To go along with Throw from the Saddle. Like green at common is just so, so deep. So, so deep. Not to mention green also has the best rares. So I think that's why I just believe that green's just going to end up being the most consistent color because, and it has the ability to support three drafters in a pod because of how deep it is, right? Like you're just going to get a bunch of green cards late because every green card is good for the most part. And so I think early on, if you want to have success, play green and then pair it with a color that has removal. So for example, I don't think blue green is a good color combination in this format. Be Blue green was really good in the last format because removal wasn't as good or removal wasn't as necessary to succeed, right? But in this format, it absolutely is important. And blue green just doesn't give you access to the removal that you need. If you draft blue green, I feel like oftentimes you're going to need to splash or <laughs> you better have like four throw from the saddles in your deck to have a chance to compete with these, these heavy hitting bombs in this format. But format's still young. Every deck's going to have a lot of rares. Uh, drafting green also gives you the flexibility of splashing a bunch of rares, which is really nice because there's so many, so much power in the set. Um, I would like to draft a good, successful, aggressive deck, but I have not played one just yet. But I would like to at some point in the future. But six and three, the trophy streak stops here. But hey, three trophies in a row into a six and three. Cannot complain about that. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Feel free to hit the like and subscribe button for more daily videos just like this. If you enjoy the content and wanted to support the channel in another way, the Patreon is the best way to do so. My Patreon, the link to the Patreon is in the description below. Shout out again to all the patrons. Really do appreciate your support. All right, let's keep things going. Maybe we'll open another green mythic or a different mythic. We'll see. But, uh... We will all find that out in tomorrow's video. Thanks for watching.